not mad at you, do you now? Is that what you know? Sorry if you get motion sickness. I'm not mad. How can I be mad? Hello. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the follow. I'm going to pause you for two seconds. I don't know if that even paused, but if it did, I'm sorry. I'm back. Oh, oh my goodness. How's your night going? going, at least. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, here they are. Found them. Found them! I'm looking for, um, these. Because I'm making this. But I didn't even find the right ones. Oh yeah, I did. Okay. No, I didn't. I want these ones. <sighs> Is Shane going to be working with Ram? this season. Well, Shane, let's see. Is Shane going to be working with Ramco again this season? This season? Next season? I'm getting next season. Seven two six three seven three A. Is that your country? You're beautiful. You are worthy. You matter. You too. JV, thank you. Thank you for the rose. Is it over for Crystal and Sean? Is it over for Crystal and Sean? No. Thank you for the likes, I appreciate that. At least something is liked. <laughs> Just kidding. 
Give me the thing, Pistol. Does it help me when I get gifts? Yes. It actually pays me. But it also helps a lot for bringing in viewers. But it only pays me like 50% of, or 30% or something, 40%, I don't know, something in there of whatever the gift cost. So, whatever that math is, I don't know, I don't really pay attention. Hence not knowing the percentage. <laughs> for the follow Charles but um it also helps a lot for when people like the live because then they put you in front of more people at least or they put you on like the FYP you know you know so I'm doing free yes or no's whoever's in here and um mini reads one question five dollars three questions ten dollars medium ship fifty dollars Thank you for the crown. I like that one. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tapping the screen, however, just stay. I forget how I was going to be doing this. Hmm. You're my queen. Thank you. Well, I thank you. Thank you for tapping the screen. You can make like a game of it, you know, like just like make a song. <laughs> Play darts. What was I gonna? How was I gonna do this? No, I can just do it because I want to. That's a good reason. That's actually the best reason. You're right. I'll co-sign with that. Because why wouldn't you want to? It's such an easy way to help me. Thank you. Oh my gosh, did anyone see the news? No, I did not. Anyone? Did you? <laughs> Why? Dare I ask? <gasps> Anything for you? Marina. Thank you. Gee, thanks. Heaven is missing an angel. Oh no. It's the top story. Where did that angel go? Do you think? Apparently they just proved or admitted the world is square. <laughs> Maybe it's a cube. Ever think of that? Maybe everybody's right? I mean, think about it. When you look at like a north, south, east, west, it's in a plus sign. Which could be a square, right? <laughs> so maybe it's just a cube. No, that's a...
cop out so no one is wrong. How's that a cop out? It's just another idea that nobody's suggested yet. I mean, jumping from a flat square to a round globe is kind of a big leap there. I'm not sure how that many people could be that far. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, don't believe anything I just said right now. I was just being difficult. Well, now that I mention it, though, <laughs> kind of does make sense. The Earth is a cosmic turtle. <laughs> Something that the celestial sees. Hi. <laughs> What's up? What you doing? What's up? <laughs> you like that? Yeah, royalty's a pretty cool guy. Oh my gosh. This isn't turning out how I thought it would. Oh, shoot. Abort, abort. Redo. I think I just need to start from the beginning again. Start over. <laughs> oh my gosh, my allergies. <clears throat> That's what I do not like about rainy days. Please relax again. What was I making? Well, this is the rose quartz in here. And I was going to make a dragonfly with the rose quartz as its head but it's not working out so now I'm going to take out the rose quartz and I'm gonna just use beads or maybe no I'm not I'm just gonna use a new piece of wire <laughs> leave that rose quartz right where it, right where it's at okay why do I keep getting hurt by people and trusting them? Well, hurt in which way? Thank you for the follow. Thank you, fire. Well, that was me doing all the amazing hearts. Thank you! I'm trying to be in a relationship and they cheat and they're dishonest. Are you being selective about who you're dating? Or are you compromising on what your interests are or what your expectations are in your partner just because you feel like you get what I mean like my question I hope I might have asked it kind of off confusing thank you for the roses I appreciate that so much
kind of just thought I could be a good person and treat them well since they're always in bad relationships. Okay, but see, somebody that's always in bad, you have to look at your, your person's history because history repeats itself unless the person is doing the healing work. <gasps> Cute! Um, unless the person's actually doing, like, actively working on themselves, then they're more likely than not going to repeat their patterns. Now, if they're working on themselves, or if they have, like, an epiphany, then of course people can change, and I am walking living proof of it, but it takes somebody wanting to, but also somebody being willing to. They tell me that they're tired of narcissistic people and assholes, and they treat me bad. Yeah. It's kind of a... It's because of this. Okay, so this is the this is the reason why. People go to what they know, what they're familiar with, even if they don't actually want it, and even if they don't actually like it, even if it's something toxic for them. They still feel more comfortable going towards what they recognize or what seems familiar. So the other reason is because when they go to someone that is not familiar in that way, so somebody that's used to abuse and then they get involved with somebody who's really nice, then what happens is their inner self, their, you know, like their self-critical self, their self that's like the negative self-talk because of the conditioned experiences from previous, that self tells them this one's just as bad, they're the same, and then when that belief doesn't get confirmed, they're faced with two different options. One, well I guess a couple different options, but the main ones are, one, they can admit that they were wrong about the person, and actually have to try to trust them and step out of their comfort zone and actually then start admitting that maybe they're the one that is causing the problems at that point, right? Or they have to find a way to confirm to themselves that they are right. That they were right. And in order to do that, they have to prove their partner to be just like the other ones. Or the other option, they end up being the one who repeats the cycle from the previous person's behavior because that is what's familiar. And they don't feel like they're capable of somebody that actually cares or they don't or they're seeking some outside approval or outside appreciation that is just empty because they are trying to find a way to love themselves and Unfortunately, in those types of situations, the more that the other person shows them love, the more they actually try to self-destruct or destruct the relationship because they themselves are not ready for the relationship because of the past trauma that wasn't healed yet. So if you're ever... Oh, what's the Phoenix concept? Um, It's the way I live my life. You know, like if you feel like you need to change things, then you just... Or if you fail and fall really hard, then just let things disintegrate and re-rise from the ashes and rebuild and you'll rise up more beautiful and stronger than you went down. And everybody has the option to continuously do that until they like the way that things go. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you're going to date somebody that is used to abusive relationships or narcissistic relationships. You have to remember another thing too. I'm gonna write my light myself on fire. I'll, I'll rise up. Oh. <laughs> well, don't actually do that, um, unless you're like in like a rocket. That might be cool. But what you have to really pay attention to is ask the people like, "Hey, so you're coming out of a rough relationship? That's really unfortunate. I would so be there and support you. Are you willing to do counseling?" So that we can fix what was broken before and you can learn to trust me. And then they might be able to actually show you their true colors immediately because if they say no, 
and then run, run real fast. And if they say yeah, then you might actually be able to work with them from the very beginning before they have a chance to screw things up. Because unfortunately, if you're taking them on into a relationship and they haven't done that work on their own already, then you are taking on the baggage of the previous person, unfortunately. And that's where the sooner the better <laughs> it's helpful when you are going to be trying to heal it. So that you can drop that baggage off of the door. <laughs> yeah, I'm willing to do counseling. I know, that's awesome. That is so awesome. I'm just tired of trusting people. But see, the thing is, it's not so much it takes psychology to understand and want to help. Yeah. Um, I'm just tired of trusting people. It's not so much trust that's the problem. It's discernment. And also expectation. You know? Trust itself, you can trust many people. There's many, many people that are out there that I mean, they're very trustworthy. But discernment of who you're and when you're opening yourself up to people and why you're opening yourself up to them, that can make a big difference. So if you know that the person is damaged and you know that they came from a rough relationship or whatnot, you kind of have to have the expectation that they're going to be some type of trauma responses happening and triggers happening. And so that's where it's best to just really stay open in communication with your partner. And allow them to be 100% themselves so that you know who you're actually dealing with. And then once you start seeing red flags and they're not correcting them after you've communicated them, then that's when it's time to just let go and let move on, right? And try again with the next one or whatever. I think I ignored my discernment this time, the person told me, otherwise, I uh, yeah, see. And that's where trusting yourself first and foremost, that's, you know, because here's the thing. Let's say the person is somebody that's totally trustworthy, right? And then you're telling yourself that they're not, just because of whatever past trauma you might have, you know, like, or filter that you're seeing them through, whatever, you know? That insecurity of not being able to trust them is going to affect the relationship just as much as if they really weren't trustworthy. You know what I mean? So if you yourself think this person is not to be trusted, then that's where it comes in, where you need to focus on whether or not there's healing that needs to happen within you, or if it's really the other person that's not trustworthy. <laughs> if there hasn't been proof of it yet, then maybe focus on yourself. If there has been proof of it, then work on things with the person or kick them to the curb, you know, if it's damaging you. But if you don't feel right about something and you haven't figured out why or the cause of it or the solution for it, then you're just ignoring your own, your own healing that could be happening. I'm on step four, five, four, SSD. Hopefully I can comply. Oh, com wait, comp view for previous coaching. Oh, okay, cool. You're almost done. That's awesome. Thank you for the likes. But it's also hard because I've known them for years and they've lived a life of hell. Yeah, radical acceptance. Yeah. Um, but you also, if you've known them for years, has anyone told you how beautiful and awesome you are today? Mm, I don't think so. But thanks. <laughs> Go figure if this is how they treat people. Well, yeah, have you, if you've known them for years, then you've seen their behaviors, right? Or, or you didn't know this about them. Because here's the other thing. A lot of people, <laughs> thank you for the likes, a lot of people who say that they, okay, so let me put it this way, because it's not, I don't know how many people, but 
sometimes <laughs> people forget that in a relationship where they're claiming the person to be a narcissist, right? More often than not, that hasn't been diagnosed, right? And everybody is narcissistic. Everybody has those tendencies. It's a big spectrum. But it's only diagnosed if it's a real, true, core, like this is their only side of their personality type situation, right? So here's the thing, though. A narcissist and another person, it's just a style difference of how you connect with people and how you interact with people. Because you can also, like a lot of my friends and are great, and they definitely, <laughs> they definitely have NPD. Um, but if you are not somebody that's actually formally diagnosed, right? And it's just somebody that somebody's like, oh, they're such a narcissist, because that's become like a new witch hunt nowadays, right? You have to look at the person also who is claiming to be the quote-unquote victim in the situation. Because if you think about it, or if you are somebody that has been that person, you really have to do some shadow work on the situation because if you think about it, you are being equally harmful to that narcissist who's typically somebody that just has an avoidant attachment style. Um, because, like, think about it. If what's like the number one thing that you hear is that, like, the person is critical of everything that the other one does, <laughs> or that they t tell them that they have a problem when they don't actually have a problem, or they um, gossip about them or talk badly about them behind their backs and then act a different way to their face, right? Or that they um, She told me when she says sorry, she doesn't mean it. That would... So she's basically saying that she's not apologizing for her actions. Just the fact that it's causing a problem. To be honest, I feel like that's kind of, I, I don't want to make it sound bad, but I personally um, kind of do that sometimes too, if I really don't see the problem with my actions. Because it's like, well, it sucks that there's a problem now because of something I chose, and it really sucks that the other person's upset, but if I don't have an awareness of why it's upsetting, then it's very difficult to want to say that. I regret, because saying sorry basically means you regret it, you know, like, and what if I don't regret what I did because I didn't see a problem with it, and that's where being able to communicate why on a way that, in a way that um, the other person can actually understand is important, but also if they're not willing to understand or they're not willing to see from the other side, then it's probably somebody that's not willing to actually actively participate in a relationship in the first place, and it's probably better to remove yourself then, you know? Because it's one thing to not be sorry for your actual choice, you know? But it's another thing to not want to hear why the other person is hurting, at least. She followed it by, she never feels sorry. It's just sorry because they were offended. Yeah, but I agree with you. Yeah, because I, like, I think that a lot of times people give false sorries, too. And that's like, so it's kind of like, um, it's a double-edged sword, you know? Like, because it's like, if you say sorry and you really didn't mean it, and you're claiming that you are, then what ends up happening is you're going to do it again, and it's going to hit the person off guard again. Because the person's going to be like, why would you do that? You apologized already for the last time, you know? And then it just throws out the meaning of I'm sorry in the end, you know? So if she doesn't mean it, then it's probably a good thing that she's at least admitting that. 
So you gotta give her credit there, but it does suck if she's not willing to see it from your perspective at least a little bit, so that she can, you know, because there's gotta be compromise, there's gotta be understanding and communication, no matter how big the differences are, you know? Have you tried to see things from her side? Just curious, playing devil's advocate. <laughs> and just a little background. I now have, what do I have? That's messed up. They have to understand where you're coming from too. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, at least try to, yeah. But you have to do the same. In order for any actual fix to the solution, both parties need to see it from the other person as best as they can, and the only way to really say that you saw it from the other person's perspective is to say that you would have done the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, so... I'm giving grace, that's good. That's good. What was it that she did, if you don't mind me asking? Or, like, what was the situation? Because maybe I can give you some outside perspective that would be, like, make it so it doesn't hurt you as much anymore, like, because maybe you'll understand it in a different way or whatever. She told me that she was using me. Okay. And then what did she do after that? Did you stay with her? Best person to get advice from right here. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> she was drinking. What did she say that she was using you because of? Like, is this somebody that you're in a, like, a long-term relationship with? I guess that should be my first question. with me, I guess. So you guys weren't in the long term. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I was with her till she moved. What was the context that she said that with? Like, was it just like, oh, thanks for the shot, I'm using you? Or is it like, you guys were arguing already? Or was it like... <clears throat> a place to say, stay, it seems like. Mm. That is a possibility. But, let's hear more content. state am I from? California. She said I'm not sorry. I don't feel sorry when I apologize. I don't mean it. Okay, but, but what was she saying sorry about in the first place? Because she said, I'm using you for sex, and then said, I don't know why I said that.
so you guys were... I think I would need more context. <laughs> like, so... But what were you guys, like, talking about before before that just spouted out, you know? <clears throat> you lived with her or she lived with you? But also, what were you guys talking about before she said that? Hi, I just joined. What are you making? I am trying <laughs> to make a dragonfly, but I don't really have a plan for it yet, so it's not really going all that great right now. I think I should have made a plan first, maybe, for this one. We'll see. I like the challenge. I lived with her getting a house, a car, and having babies. Okay. So that, to me, sounds like she's scared of commitment. And she was trying to minimize the sense, like the, like the expectations of her. Oh cool, you're really pretty. Thank you, Addison. Does that make sense? Like, um, like in a state of like, or in a moment of panic, you know, like she just said something that would make it seem like it was more casual than it actually was, you know? I know I can't reach out to her though. That's probably better. Because if she's scared of commitment, then she's scared of commitment right now. Which means it's not really the best option to try to commit to. Yeah? I really like your makeup. Thank you! I appreciate that. Oh, I figured out what I want to do here. I told her I'll never change my number, and then she's, and then she's off my. I also like your nails too. Thank you. If she wants you, she'll come back or reach out to you. Yeah. You would be miserable with her. You would. It was a blessing in disguise, quite honestly. It was a stepping stone towards the relationship you're meant for. Um, a really helpful thing that you could do for a future relationship potentials or prospects is to um, take an attachment style quiz and have them take it. So you know what you're working with, so you guys can... She's the best with advice, honestly. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. It hurt. I wrote her 17 poems in a month. I'm anxious. Oh, you're anxious, preoccupied. Me too. So yeah, it'd be really beneficial if the other person um, was to find out themselves too, if they don't already know. But also, like, love languages and stuff, like, that's super important too in the very beginning. I think it's silly that people don't do that kind of stuff right away, so they know what the... Like, what the real, you know, potential is, or what the issues could be before they actually become issues and all that. Just seems like it makes a lot more sense than doing it all backwards and waiting until the issues are there. But hey, that's just me. She was hella avoiding, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely going to bring that fear of commitment. So, she's just doing what she knows to do. And that's what she's going to be capable of until she decides to learn how to do any different, you know? that's not anything to do with you. She would have done it if the... I like the light in the back. Oh, thank you. 
these ones. That's okay, I just fell very hard. Avoidance will do that to you. That is the truth. But the good thing about falling hard is that you have the option now of actually getting back up and having a solid foundation beneath you. What if she's... Oh, I try not to be in autistic limerence with you, Amber. I appreciate you. You're more than welcome. What if she's in a relationship and not happy? She says she has feelings for you. What do you do? Like, do you just take it at face value? Well, what would the other option be other than taking it at face value? She's not the type to play games. Well, then I would say that it would probably be pretty trustworthy what she's telling you. And that realistically, she's probably the type to need to see physical proof of safety before she can just trust safety. And also that it would be the perfect time to focus on getting yourself to where you are. Like basically don't do your actions trying to like chase her, right? Like do your actions so that you are able to catch her <laughs> if she falls. <laughs> you get what I mean? Like because then no matter what, you are climbing and you are or or there's always the option of deciding whether or not it's worth the time to you, <laughs> you know, like, because people can definitely have feelings for more than one person at one time, and especially if it's been a long-term relationship, then it's probably some pretty messy situations, so maybe she's the type, too, that needs to, now, if she's, like, out actively, like, you know, like, meeting up with you and stuff like that, then, um, it might not be... You'd probably want to make sure that you guys do some work on that because, again, patterns. But if she seems to be pretty respectful to the situation at hand and it's just one that she can't get out of right away maybe or whatever, then I would suggest going as slow as possible so that you don't feel 
any type of distrust in her in the future, but also not giving up on her. Like, don't put her in a situation, or yourself in a situation where you're going to mess up, basically, to where it might break your guys' ability to trust each other in the future. But still be there for her and still do what, you know, like, it doesn't mean, like, kick her out of your life in the least. It just means make sure you guys remember that people will acquire the feelings of guilt or paranoia because of their own actions, typically first. Let her come for you, you not, not you come for her. Yeah, because if you try to rush somebody out of a relationship that they're in, whether or not they're actually done with the relationship or not, all that, all that aside, because obviously they probably are if they're looking at other pursuits, right? But you, they need to be, it's just like with a drug addict, like the person needs to be ready to leave in order for them to actually be able to cut those ties and not, you know? So if there's a certain, like, situation that needs to get resolved first, or if there's some type of, like, loose ends that need to be tied up, like, that might be what's causing the delay to where she just wants to know that she's making the right choice and that she did her best in the previous situation so that she doesn't have to carry doubts or guilt or feelings or, um, you know, forward towards the, you know, obviously that's not going to happen. I'm not rushing here. Okay, good. Oops, I skipped a couple. I'm pretty paranoid with my intrusive thoughts. You know, those can definitely get to you. There is ways so that you can work on those, though. And, like, her chase you, not you chase her. Yeah, well, um, maybe going back and forth. That's always fun. No. <laughs> a little bit of chase is good both directions, but maybe just making a plan of where you're going to meet in the end and both of you working on getting there instead of actually chasing each other. Because if you're always chasing the person, you're never going to catch them, especially if they are also chasing you, you know? So, or they're just going to pass you right by when they're chasing and it's, you know, or you're going to start running or whatever, like, but if you're like, you know what, this is what needs to happen. This is what's going to happen. This is what you can expect and you guys just stay in open communication with each other in the meantime, then by the time you're ready, then you're going to be meeting at the same place. But like, what if those loose ends end up getting tied back up so that's what I'm afraid of? That she's just in it for the moment of feeling wanted. Is it hard working with your nails? A little bit sometimes, yeah. Like that comes to my mind. Okay, well... What is she telling you? And... How often does she lie to you? Or how often have you seen her lying about things? She said that she likes to feel wanted. Okay. I love those lashes, girl. <laughs> Thank you, Addison. You're sweet. <laughs> I think most people like to feel wanted. They need to be desired. Okay. And she doesn't lie. Okay, and what has she said about her feelings towards you? I sent you 102 likes. Ah, oh, you're awesome. Thank you. She says she has some. She's starting to get them. Okay. Well, then I would suggest that you believe what she's telling you and 
take it for exactly what she's telling you instead of letting because you're going to lie to yourself all the time that's what people do we lie to ourselves but if she's usually pretty honest with you then I'm sure she's not lying about how she feels if anything she's probably downplaying it because of not wanting to feel like um, like required or obligated to rush something that she's trying to do a certain way yeah, that's why I haven't just left, because I feel like at first she did just want the attention. Maybe. How, how else would you, I mean, what else would she, you don't know the person yet, <laughs> right? Like, so how would she know if she liked anything else other than the attention in the very beginning? Just like you couldn't have known anything about her to like have feelings for her right off the bat. So you probably liked giving the attention or you liked the attention from the attention or, you know, but because in the very beginning of any connection, it's pretty based on chemistry, not, or like, um, you know, not so much on knowing the person's personality yet. And then the more that you get to know the person's personality, that's when you start actually, you know. Same with your ex. Yeah, but I told her from the start I wanted to hit that <laughs> at first. Right, so you guys are on the... Sounds like you guys are on the same page then. Here's the difference, though. Does she give you attention? You said that she likes the attention, which there's nothing wrong with that. Lots of, most girls are going to want attention. But does she give back what she's receiving? As far as, like, does she show interest in you? Does she support you? Does she um, listen to you? Does she try to compromise with you, or try to, um, negotiate with you, or try to understand you, does she, um, do things for you, like acts of service of some sort or other, you know, um, does she pay attention to you, or give you attention as far as, like, her time, because I sent you 143 likes, ah, 143 means I love you, because that's where people get into toxic dynamics is when they are giving everything and the other person is just receiving, then that's somebody that's using you. That's somebody that is there for just the attention. But if they are returning in their own ways healthy attention back or affection back or whether it's actually like, you know, like praising you or something like or complimenting you all the time like that might be different that's probably the type of attention that she's wanting but the type of attention that most girls would give back is going to be more nurturing type like you know wanting to help the person wanting to be there for the person wanting to talk to the person wanting to give them their attention you know that gift hard thank you again Oh, that hit hard. Thank you again. You're welcome. I would send you a rose, but I can't. Well, virtual rose. Thank you. <laughs> because a lot of times, too... It's like, how is her relationship that she's in? What kind of dynamic is it? So 
Sometimes I get inside my own head. Abusive. Okay. You're nice and pretty. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but I'm not sure. I don't know. Well. Does she like a hundred percent sure? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Well, what type of abusive? I mean, there's lots of types of abusive. But you also have to think, okay, so let's see here. Wait, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> what was I reading before that? Physical and mental, I think? Okay. Realistically, she's probably not wanting to rush things as far as opening yourself up to you or as far as like, you know, emotionally, like getting invested, like planning on a future or planning on, um, for sure being there for, you know, like, um, forever or whatever because of not knowing you a hundred percent yet and so if you guys have had any like disputes already and she's not with you yet or if you um are not fully like like you haven't learned each other's quirks yet or their downfalls or their you know positives or whatever or if you're in that getting to know each other stage she's probably very and depending on if this is her first relationship that was abusive or not, or if there's been others, and how she's gotten trapped in them, all of those things make a big difference of what she would be wanting to learn about you before she's willing to say that she would be wanting to or able to or promising to be able to commit. Because everything that she's asking me to do for sure I'm doing well physical for sure she's afraid to even say the wrong thing okay everything to change what she says I need help with idea but make sure you're only doing it in regards to things that you agree with don't don't just do things just because she's telling you to and make sure she's doing the same types of things for herself. <laughs> that's a, once again, don't make it where you're the one that's only putting out or doing the effort and she's not. I try to the best of my abilities. That's all anybody can expect, right? I sent you 132 more likes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if she's really doing anything because I don't know her, like you said. Well, see, that's where it's a good thing that you guys are getting to know each other then so that you can know that. And if it's just what she says, and if I don't know her. Well, how could it... I guess it basically it would go both directions. I mean, that's probably the doubts that she would potentially have of you, but I don't think she... she probably doesn't. <laughs> like, if you... because then that would mean that you're going into the connection not trusting each other if you're not going to believe what the other one's telling you. And so that right there, I don't... Be skeptical is what I'm getting from you. That's the opposite of what I'm saying. I'm not trying to be... What I'm saying is, 
if you're going into a connection and you're not trusting what she's telling you, then that's going to be a problem, you know? Talk to me, I need you. What's going on, Stephen? Whoever did your nails should give you a refund. That'd be tight. What's disturbing to Steven? Oh, cause Kitty's got claws. <laughs> What's up with you, shirt? W? Why shirt W? You wanna know why tarot readers have long nails? It's because it's easier to pick up the cards. <laughs> you look good otherwise, but those nails are too small, too long. Possibly. But thank you. Why shirt W? What's the W for? I play guitar lately. Huh? I play guitar lately. It's dark. I don't get it. <laughs> Please explain. <laughs> Hello, Jan. Your nails look good. You did them yourself, I can tell. Oh, of course, I did them myself. I'm not going to pay somebody else. So I just refunded myself then, I guess. <laughs> Plus, I'm like you. <laughs> Thank you. It's ridiculous how much girls spend on nails. I gotta go, my food is here. Okay, bye, shirt. Thanks for the follow. Nice talking to you, I guess. <laughs> I play alone. Just got to say, if you're in a relationship and y'all don't have trust, y'all don't have anything. Yeah. Right, so that should be the very first thing that you're working on. If you don't trust the person. Didn't want to say why the W is in the same. I know. Odd. I play alone, but it's darker. It's difficult. I don't get what you mean by darker, I guess. I don't know. I trust my guitar. That's good. I'm sending you a lot more likes. Thank you! I appreciate you. Dark emotions. Oh! So, like, it's depressing, kind of? Mm. That's always a double-edged sword, huh? that, like, dark emotions and, like, dark feelings are what is usually the most artistic. Thank you for the likes. hundred and seventy-four, what? You're like the like boss. <laughs> Thank you for the likes. So yeah, I would say if you don't trust her, that should be the first thing that you're working on. Do, do you make your necklaces yourself? Um, I, these ones actually, both of them are multiple necklaces that I just combined together, but I didn't actually like make the originals that I combined, no. But I have made some of mine that I have. Only acoustic guitar alone. Thank you for the hand hearts. Ah, I dropped my bead. Hey, hey, gorgeous. Hi, how are you? Oh, they're really cool. 
cool. Thank you. My mom actually gave me this amber. The big one, at least. The little ones I got. <gasps> Thank you for the high bear. And the roses and the shoes. Oh, cute. That was like Valentine's Day. Trying to get my followers up so I can go live myself. Haha. <laughs> well, best of luck on that one. It took me kind of a while, actually. But I think it's because I just didn't, like, know what kind of videos to make, so I just wasn't making them. <laughs> like, that's gonna really get you anywhere, right? Like, but once I started making some, then it, then it started rolling pretty... They have, like, um, grow rooms, you know? I don't know if you've ever seen any of those. I've seen them around recently, actually. I just learned that they existed. <laughs> They're, like, um, certain creators that their entire focus of their room is for people to follow each other. So that they can get their subscriber counts up. I don't know if they're TikTok legal. But. Word on the street is they exist. That didn't work. Can't let go. Why wouldn't they be? Because it's um, a way to like basically spam your followers, or like you know, like it, it's just like not it's frowned upon. But I'm pretty sure it might be TikTok. I don't think it's TikTok legal. <laughs> um, but. Because it, it, like, makes it an, in, like, uneven advantage for the people that are trying to do it, like, the genuine way. It's kind of like if you were to buy votes, you know? If you're running for, like, president, you bought the votes. I do have 8,000 likes! I didn't even notice that. That's so awesome. Thanks to... Um, Antonio and Addison, mostly, I think. Where am I from? I'm from California. What about yourself? Unfortunately, why unfortunately? I know somebody that just moved out there. But, um... Yeah, downloading something, maybe. Very much, quite possibly. Oh my gosh, I want to live in California. <laughs> why wouldn't, why wouldn't they want to? I like California. I love it because of the weather.
I don't like the crime and the violence, though. Or the crisis in some areas. Rent, homeless crime. I like your rings. Thanks. Me too. Ah. I had another... Well, I had like three more on my other hand. But I took them off when I was putting on lotion earlier and I forgot to put them back on. It makes me nervous on here. <laughs> but yeah, I would say trust her. Really take what she tells you for what it is instead of trying to pressure or anything, or instead of trying to read into it, if there's nothing that needs to be read into. If it's something that is you putting in a thought for the other person, really consider where that, th that thought is coming from inside of you. If it's fear-based, or if it's um, actually based off of evidence that you're seeing in front of your eyes. That's a huge one. Make sure that you ask her about your thought. If you do have a negative thought, give her the opportunity to explain it better. Um, without, like, before you get upset, you know? Um, also understand that probably if she's in a, an abusive relationship, especially if it's abusive and mentally abusive, She's probably somebody that second guess the way that she um, explains things a lot. So you might want to make sure that you're communicating if you don't understand it the right way, you know, like before you get upset because maybe she's just slipping up on the way that she's saying it and describing it weird or um, saying it wrong and then panicking that she said it wrong or whatever. But also when it comes to like her feelings towards you, She's probably, is she relatively stable, like mentally, or is she turbulent, or is she depressed, does she have BPD, does she have anxiety, does she have, um, she's stable, seems stable, 8.7 thousand, awesome, thank you. Stable enough. On the outside, you're saying. A little bit. Yeah, I'm not saying it like it's a bad thing. I'm saying it like... So that you can, because that's going to make a big difference about the way that, um, not crazy in a bad way, okay, that's, but if she's somebody who, again, if she's in an abusive situation, whether it's mentally or physically or <clears throat> She does have some issues, but it's not something I can't learn about. Okay. If she has had previous situations that were mentally or physically or whatever, or any type of narcissistic, um, you know, bullying any time in her life, then she's probably been told that she's wrong a lot. It's not what's on the outside, it's what's on the inside. Also, you never know what someone is going through. Very, very, very true. A lot of people who are the darkest of dark are great at putting on a smile and a giggle. 
and seeming to have things together because that's what makes it so people don't ask them questions that they don't want to have to expose. That she's been told she's wrong and she's not wrong. Yeah, probably a lot. And she probably has also been gaslit a lot to having to feel like she's the one to blame when other people get hurt. Or when other people are the ones that are wrong in the situation. Which means she's probably very scared to tell you anything as far as her true feelings until she's able to back them with her actions 100%. Because she's scared of being told that she was not being genuine or that she was lying when she wasn't or that she didn't care or that she was trying to, you know, because of the fact that it would make your expectations from her increase with the level of her emotions that she's expressing. Does that make sense? So it's like, well, if you care this much about me, then why aren't we together right now? And then she would have to go through that whole cycle of feeling like she's not capable of being what she wants to be for the person because of her previous dynamic that she's trapped in. Believe me when I say she's not wrong. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. Like, she will... But she's been told she's... Okay. Oh, she's not wrong. Through until you walk a mile and there she's right. Um, like, will she ever be long? To me when I tell her she's wrong. Oh, she'll never be wrong. Wait. Believe me when I say she's not wrong. She's trying to hide her pain by putting a smile on her face, right? Yeah, I get that. Oh, I pushed a button. Just try to let her settle and give her time to heal before you. Yeah, because you really, really, truly want to make sure that she's able to heal before anything because, you, like I said earlier, you don't want to pick up the bags from the other person, right? Like, you want your, because then your, your guys' connection and relationship wouldn't get the opportunity that it should be able to get. 